we start in a Venezuelan jungle. As a British biologist called Dr. Atherton and an American nature photographer called Manly spray noxious gas into some trees, what makes all the local wildlife fall down dead in their bowls. Which rather reminds me of my granddad when he used to let one off after Sunday dinner and almost gas me granny into a coma. <coughs> but anyway, they soon capture two members of an ancient and aggressive species of spider, which seem to have somehow survived their killer gas, which should have been enough to kill something the size of an elephant. Or Piers Morgan. Later, the doctor bloke studies it and realises the specimens lack sex organs, indicating that they're drone-type soldiers and the species thereby exists as a hive. Which is well weird for these spidey fellas, because they're not normally non-binary, but I guess they've just been spending too much time on TikTok. But Manly couldn't give us stuff right now, mainly because he's just been bitten by one of those super furry things without his consent, and is also now convulsing to death also without his consent. His dead body is then shipped back to the States and specifically to a small town called Kanima. 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 To a small town called Kanima. But turns out that creepy culprit has snuck inside the coffin and stowed away and has also sucked his body dry on the way over. But unfortunately, the fearsome furry fella gets snatched up by a giant fuck off bird immediately after he tries to leave and then gets dropped off outside of Jeff Daniels' new gaff. His character, though, is called Ross Jennings, a city boy doctor who has moved here to the country to take over from the town's elderly physician who's due to be retiring this week. Anyway, after he's done boasting to a black removal guy about how expensive his wine collection is, he gets his wife to remove a simple house spider like a rye cat. Because apparently, he's had a giant phobia of spiders since one crawled all over his face as a baby. So they let it go in the barn before that Randy Ross fella shags his wife that evening, whilst the two horny migrated spiders do the same, also in the barn. The next day, the doctor he was supposed to take over from says he don't want to do that retiring thing no more, and he's totally stayed in his job, so he should just shut up about it already. Whilst outside, a bully cop tries to give him a ticket, before some old bird comes to his rescue and gets in the hair cow dodge. And this Miss Hollins lady must feel proper sorry for him now he's moved all this way and technically has no patience, and says that she'll totally be his first. So, after he tells his wife that he's moved his entire family out into the sticks and now has no clients or income simply because he couldn't tell a stubborn old man to honour the agreement they made in good faith, he later takes the sweet Miss Hollins off her meds, because he reckons that old doctor bloke don't know what he's talking about no more. Whilst elsewhere... Ross's daughter snaps a picture of a giant fuck-off web that's been built in their barn. Naturally, Ross almost has a bleeding heart attack when he sees it, and is so scared he falls off a small ladder while screaming like a little bitch as a throbbing egg sac pulsates in the corner. A few days later, and the family meet various townsfolk at a garden party, where Miss Holland says she feels much better now she's stopped taking those pills and shit. Which then makes Ross super confused and suspicious when she's totally found dead the next day. The stubborn elderly doctor reckons she simply died suddenly from a heart attack. But Ross reckons only young people die suddenly from heart attacks these days and wonders whether it could have actually been climate change. But the stubborn elderly doctor is outraged when Ross says he took her off the pills that she was on for years but he says she told him that she feels much better so something else must be going on bro. But the stubborn elderly doctor says he ain't gonna order no stinking autopsy and cut his neighbour's chest open and sheet, so shut up about it already. Naturally, Ross soon has a crisis of conscience and wonders whether he's actually a pretty shit doctor given his one and only patient who lived perfectly well for 60 years, died after barely 48 hours under his care, and even the wood in his basement is rotting underneath him, so he's getting super depressed and starting to feel like he's cursed. So his wife promptly calls an exterminator in order to get rid of any termites and to make him feel better so that he can get back to building his wine cellar. But this Delbert fella can't find said termites for love nor money and says it's just a case of bad wood, bro. Also trying to cheer Rossy Boy up, the local football coach lets him bundle the team's ball bags as a special treat before a player drops dead in the middle of the field and they totally don't see the hairy spider crawling out of the helmet before being squished by a shoe. Naturally, Given Ross has only been in town for five minutes and already two fuckers are dead, the locals start calling him Dr. Death, which really doesn't help his insecurities and wonder whether or not he really is a good doctor. 
Later that evening, he's called to the home of that stubborn elderly physician who refused to retire and give him a job. And turns out the old coot is also dead after one of them creepy crawlies crept into his slipper and bit his little tootsie. Bittersweetly, Ross now finds himself the town medic and finally has a job that they moved here for. Huzzah! No, I bet the remaining townsfolk are totally shitting themselves now only having one medical professional to turn to when they're ill and whose nickname is Dr. Fucking Death. Bruh. And after his wife puts up his daughter's amateur photographs on the office wall, he demands the bodies of the first two victims be exhumed so they can totally test for dodgy bites and shit. Meanwhile, the newly crowned Dr. Ross calls up that Dr. Atherton fella from the film's opening. You know, the geese who couldn't be bothered to check that no ancient prehistoric super spiders had managed to crawl into their gear before they left the jungle and basically caused all this mess in the first place. But Atherton reckons he's just been a right drama queen when he says half the town has been killed by arachnids, and so just sends along his young bitch to investigate. I mean young assistant to investigate and totally shut him up already. So this Dr. Collins chappy assists in inspecting the bodies they just exhumed and soon confirms that Miss Collins and that random football kid were indeed yeeted by an eight-legged freak. So Collins tells his boss to get his ass down here pronto because there's three bodies in the town morgue who have been killed by a super potent spider species. And naturally, this gives Dr. Atherton a right raging lob on. And so he hot tails it over there, whilst more townsfolk are being terrorised by super kung fu jumping spiders in their own showers and bogs. After Dr. Collins captures one of them in a small glass and Dr. Ross almost wets his panties in paralytic fear, Delbert the Exterminator hilariously concludes that there's no spiders in this geezer's house, despite a giant fuck off mutant one chilling out right beside his hand. The next day, Dr. Atherton finally arrives and Ross gives him a right bollocking about not checking inside the coffins for super potent spider species when he sends his dead colleagues back to their hometowns to be buried and shit. And later, he once again confirms that this new spider species has no sex organs, because they're totally drones, bro. Which means there must be a giant hairy queen knocking about somewhere which they'll have to find and kill before they take over the town worse than a bunch of homeless hobos high on spies. Anyway, the cop then brings Delbert the Exterminator over to meet the group and the gang then drive off to find the nest, whilst Dr. Atherton stares at one of Ross's daughter's photographs what she took of the giant web in their attic earlier, and tells the cop to get in there pronto. And after arrival in the barn, Dr. Atherton asks said cop to go get the exterminator and leave him there all alone in the nest full of giant mutant super spiders, because he totally promises that he won't be tempted to go explore and study the nest all by himself. And before you can say, this a limb well, he's webbed up worse than my bed sheets after a saucy dream. Elsewhere, Dr. Ross goes to save his family, but this place soon becomes Spider Central, and they're all promptly chased upstairs where they soon escape through a small window. Well, all except the good doctor, and it looks like it's curtains for the number one arachnophobe living through his literal nightmare IRL. And before the tooled up exterminator can burst in to save him, poor Dr. Ross falls over his own staircase and straight through his rotten floorboards down into the cellar. Unfortunately, yet rather hilariously, this is also where the nest is, and has been under his nose the whole time. Oh! So naturally, he literally starts burning down his whole house whilst trying to kill a giant fuck off spider with fire. Lol, it's just like the meeting come to life. Anyway, he's almost outsmarted by a bug when it lures him to the end of an open pipe and then jumps on his face to munch him up real good and proper. But luckily, the queen crawls up his leg and onto a random piece of wood what's balancing on his knee. So he soon catapults the very fucker directly into a small fire. Nice. But turns out the super spider is more tenacious than that musical comedy duo back in the day. And soon jumps out of the fire for one last go. Before Ross shoots it in the face with a nail gun and somehow hits a giant egg sack whilst he's at it. Huzzah! The exterminator then conveniently saves his ass right when the action is all over. And before he can say... Where were you five minutes ago when I was about to have my bodily juices drained by a furry queen and not in a good way? We abruptly cut to the city, as turns out Dr. Ross has bravely moved his family back to San Francisco and has totally run away like a rye cuck. And left an entire town without a medical professional after the community was invaded by ancient altered arachnids. And would apparently now rather deal with intermittent earthquakes than crouching tiger hidden super spiders. And that's it. That's the movie. 
Though my favourite part was when a little girl who's watched too much WWE cosplayed as the fucking Undertaker by randomly slamming a small boy into the ground like a little bitch at the garden party. Damn! But anyway, that's the plot and that is a lot. Considering that male thing so you don't miss any future recaps. Tell me if you like this flick in the comments if you have time. And I'll see you in the next one.